Question of the day. What, in your opinion, is the most underserved Euro theme? You see, Brian, that seems like a total oxymoron, right? I mean, Euros and themes, that's, that's kind of the whole point of what a Euro is. It's not about theme. It's about crunchy mechanics. Well, 20 years ago, I would have agreed with you, but now I feel like, well, 20 years ago, I wasn't playing games, but now I feel like we're in the whole, well, hold up, I want some chocolate in my peanut butter or peanut butter in my chocolate era of gaming. I think that's what we've learned more than anything. I mean, that's why you're seeing games like Anachrony, which are gorgeous. If you show them to somebody, be like, oh, who? how do you roll dice to kill each other? Oh, you don't. It's worker placement, right? So one of my favorite themes in gaming, period, is Western, the Old West, the Wild West. I mean, again, we're watching Hell on Wheels right now. Fantastic show. But, uh, I mean, we're, we're seeing a, such a rise in thematic Euros that really use their theme so well and really engage the theme so well, which is why the West is so ripe for this, because there's not always about gunfights in the West. There's about exploring, and that's why train games are so fun about when you're building out West and building everywhere, but also building these railroad towns and building these mining towns, the concept of, man, there were tents, and then poof, there was a town, right? which is what Nevada City is all about. You're building this town out and trying to live and survive in this kind of somewhat lawless area in which bandits do show up. So let's take a look right now and let me know in the comments below what is your favorite underserved or what in your opinion is the most underserved Euro theme uh, in the comments below as we look right now at this game called Nevada City from Rio Grande Games all about worker placement, yes, but the Old West. So here is the game of Nevada City set up. Now I know I've been doing a lot of these handheld views lately, but for this game I have to actually because it's such a long board, a long game. A lot of moving parts to this game with a lot of different elements. And so we're going to go through and figure out how to play this game exactly. Now we're going to be talking about the basic as well as the advanced game. I do recommend you play the basic once, but only once because after that there's a bunch of cards that are not used and you feel like you kind of miss out on a lot of the experience of some of the buildings that even need to be built. So this is the majority of the game. You start with a city, or no, sorry, you start with a homestead uh, with a different ranch here, and you get a mine, a field, and a pasture. These will all come with a resource. There are three different types of smaller resources. This would be the uh, ore, or the silver. It's silver, grain, or, or you know, farm goods, whatever you want to call that. Uh, it could be corn, could be wheat, we don't know. And then uh, livestock. So those smaller resources, as opposed to the larger size Lahav style resources, get put out here onto these buildings. Silver, obviously, then the grain, and then livestock here. Now you can gain more of these, and each of these are worth two victory points, but they also have a cost if you want to claim them. This is a worker placement game, so while you do have this area down here, it's of minor importance compared to the areas out there. Now you'll notice you start with a family. There are several different family names that are related to uh, classic Western characters. So this is the Earth family. Wyatt, Earth, get it. Now you'll notice that each of these have different tokens on them. Each of these tokens are the amount of actions that each character has. Now that is an interesting concept that we're going to see. You'll also notice that they all have bonuses that come with them. Um, which is good because you're going to want those bonuses when you take certain actions. Now you also have these round tokens and these are how you show that you've owned um, a building and when people, when you own a building you do not have to pay the fee associated with going to a building. So for instance if I was the assayer, if I had the assayer, I would get six points for owning that building as well as when I take that action I would not have to pay for it. See the one for one dollar you can trade in that times the market value one silver at the market value plus four dollars. Now, and when someone else went there, they'd have to pay me a dollar, so which is very nice. Now, over here is the market. This is such a cool concept because it's an economic market that happens in this game. So you're gonna start with a silver cube, a livestock cube, and a grain cube here. These two are gonna be pulled out of this bag and filled. These are two uh, silver cubes, and then this is a livestock. So you're gonna fill these up. So the production means that whatever colors are up here are actually going to produce when you do the produce action. Here at the market value, this is where you get this number market value from. So the market, the stockyard, and the assayer's office all work the same way. You're going to sell these goods for market value plus a bonus. So that's where that market value comes from. And that can be manipulated by these journal cards down here, which are going to change the game during the event phase. Most of them are 
bad-ish, but there are several that are good as well. So bumper crop, so you'll move a crop market value cube from the market value track to the production track, which means you're gonna produce more, but they don't sell for as much, which makes sense based on the laws of supply and demand. I'm gonna continue giving you the overview of what these cards are before I tell you how to play. You have the contract cards. These are basically cards that you can claim by going to buildings that have that color. So see that one is, let's see if I find one right side up, sorry. This one, you will grab a yellow minerals colored contract if you go there or you can straight up go there and fill it immediately so you pay the dollar to the owner and then immediately fill this if you wanted to or you could claim it and fill it later into these slots down here but you can only ever have three cards the other kinds of cards that you can have down there are workers so these workers will come into your farm and help you work now some of them have one two or even three slots they also all come with bonuses and the cool thing is you can marry these people off at the end of the year if you don't they go away from the into the discard pile but your daughter can marry one of these workers up here your son can marry one of these workers up here basically meaning you can have six full-time workers and up to three part-time workers here in in a later round which is kind of nice to get those the game lasts in a two-player game 1885, 86, 87, 88, and then 89, so it's five rounds, but in a four-player, three-player game, it's only four rounds, 55 through 59, and you'll see that some of the years don't get all of the event cards, but anyway, on your turn, you're going to choose one of your characters and take one of the actions, so if the daughter here was to go and build a building, when you build or claim a contract, you will get these resources for free, notice that, a free horseshoe and a free wood, these are things over here, and the music, by the way, is uh, a while, but these are used in building buildings, and that's the last thing I need to show you. You'll also start with some resources down here, one of each type of the larger resources. The buildings are how we fill out Nevada City out here, and these are different actions. They go by year. So in 1855, these are available here. So for instance, the brick oven. Now, this is nice to own because you can essentially just get bricks for free if you are the uh, owner of the brick oven. If not, they'll have to pay you for the bricks. So if you pay, go here, it's $2 for three bricks. In a two-player game, you can't use the brown actions up top. So the way this works is if you wanted to build this, and all of these are available based on the year and below. So what that means is it's not the top of the deck. You can go through the 1855 pile and look at all the cards and choose one to claim. Uh, you can claim it, put it out here on the board, and show that you're going to build it like this. And then when you want to actually take the action to build it, one of your characters can go here. Let's say she goes here. And remember, she brings a wood and a steel when she comes. So she fulfills the wood and the steel for that. So you would immediately just put those on there from the pile. And she needs to bring four more bricks. Now you cannot have the same person take the same action in the same place, but someone else on a later action, uh, later term. So once you finish a character, it'll go to the other person. So a later turn could come and bring bricks based on getting them from the market or the trading post and bring them over there. And when that's all filled, this flips over, you gain the points for the building, and that building is now active. The same person who built that building couldn't immediately go there. Basically, one character, which is the person with the action tokens, can never take the same action space more than once. Now, you as a player can, but the same character cannot. So then that is available. So bricks are available to get. You also score the points, and yet again, people get those points when they go there. Now also notice that buildings always carry these little con uh, contract symbols as well, so you can go there and take contracts. If you want to claim a building, here's the places to do that. So you would pay $2 to either claim a building card or claim one of these tokens over here, which are the extra... Uh, uh, things that we talked about that go into your farm. They cost their cost plus whatever it costs to claim them. So if you claimed it on this first action space, $2, and you wanted to mine, it would be $3 total. You put that over here, you immediately take the points for it. And now when you take the action, so notice this action on Woody Earth, he's got the farming and the silver mining action. So if you had two mining mines over here and you took the action with him, he immediately gets to go to another one. So you'll take one of his tokens and you'll take one of the extras to show that this is marked as well. And you'll put a piece of silver on there based on the production value. So if there's two or three pieces of silver based on that, you'll put them on there and you can use the silver later to spend. In order to marry someone, you have to have two liquor and two of these types of resources. Throwing a party, right? But basically, that's what these benefits do here. With the smaller ones, they get it, they're going to give the ability to produce more in one action. These are going to produce free resources. Now, the pistols, at the end of the round, any workers that were not purchased will fight. They become unruly. So basically, you're going to play poker uh, high card with them, kind of like in Western Legends a little bit. The person who has the highest card, you win, you defeat them, you gain a victory point. 
if you get wounded, you'll have to take one of your action tokens off and put it on the doctor's office or put it somewhere. You could instead pay a resource if the doctor's office is built in order to not take that damage. Now, that's essentially the game. I mean, all of these actions, all these buildings do different things. You know, the blacksmith is going to give you stuff. This is going to be the doctor. So you pay one of those resources to not take a wound. Uh, Sawmill is the same thing. Now, the general stores start changing. It's pay $2 for any combination of those three. Again, if you're the owner, you just get them. Both of those general stores are the same. This military store will replace the trading post up there, basically dropping the cost down by uh, one. Pharmacist is going to same kind of thing. You're exchanging goods for liquor. It's funny that that's pharmacist. The stables allows you to hire someone out of the discard pile. Post office, you discard all the current contracts down here and refill them, or you could take more. There's the saloon. You can go and gamble. When you gamble, you're going to play high card again, and there's a reward for doing that as well. As well as this is where you can go to get the banjos, which again are wild cards. Tobacconist, throw that on the ground. The tobacconist is used the action space occupied by another opponent. Newspaper is going to give you a. Uh, it's you just gain points. Uh, the capital is going to replace theirs. So it allows you to claim land and property if you want to. Um, the Bell Saloon, same thing, and then the Calvary Hotel will replace the hotel which just makes it cheaper again but what's cool is once this gets built out and the game ends when the the game is when the board is fully built what's cool is you actually start to see this boardwalk start to show up right it looks like an actual boardwalk of an old town so yes you're actually building the town itself and so yes there are more action spaces but the game also looks better it looks like there's a town out there but that is essentially how the game is played at the end of the game you'll score victory points based on where you are on this track things coming from like contracts again these contracts get filled and they have certain prerequisites and they also give you bonuses if you're the owner of certain buildings but lots and lots and lots of moving parts in this game but it's a straightforward for the most part worker placement in order to gain points to get the most points to where at the end of the game hopefully you have the most points period that is nevada city in a nutshell oh one more thing there are these secret goals which are not when you hear secret goals you tend to think like be all end all these are not end all be all points these are a few points but one of them you know one of them the opponent knows and then the one in the middle everybody doesn't know so it's just little ways that you can potentially turn the tide of the game and it's one of those things where it really helps in the well if someone looks like they're going to win that could turn the tide because nobody technically knows what all the goals are. So that is Nevada City. So that is Nevada City. I'm gonna say it first and foremost, I love this game. It does something I love in the first place, worker placement with your own personal player board that you can build out. And I know that personal player board doesn't have a ton of interaction. It is just, you throw some tiles over here, but it's a neat place to put them and it's limited. So personal player boards that look nice. Um, let me back up. Sorry. Let's talk production quality first. When you hear Rio Grande games, you don't go, oh, boom. Yeah. Like Gloomhaven style production quality. No, you think, okay, crunchy Euro, got some nice parts sometimes. But this one really does a really nice job of production quality. I love the little ranch doors. I love the I even really like the the Lahav style goods, you know, the fact that they are just chits, but they look nice, they work. And it works in this game because you do need to stack them quite a lot sometimes. So even the art looks good. I love the fact that your little tokens, much like Agra and other games like that, are workers, but they're also showing that you did this thing over here. And it's neat because you have those slots where some of the characters will have three actions on them. Some will have two, but you just put your little markers on them to show where they start, and I really like that. So presentation-wise, I also love the fact that nobody has a bad view of this game. Notice that. You're not, oh, who? I don't really want to sit on the upside-down side of the board. There is no upside-down side of the board because it's a top-down view of a city street, which means you get people going up the street this way and down the street this way, and depending on where you're sitting, it still looks the same. When someone puts their building down in front of them, it's actually facing you. So it's interesting because, well, you don't have to put the building there, obviously, but most of the time you're going to put the buildings in front of you just for ease. But what's nice about that is it means that if I have to pay you money, I'm already looking at it, right? Ease of access. I love the fact you just mark your buildings pretty simply. Well, I own this. You owe me. Such simplicity in the way the board is laid out, even though it's a big board, a big long board that you have to kind of look across the town. But I almost feel like that adds to the theme of this growing scope of a town, right? So the presentation on this one, I really enjoy. I love the way this looks on the table. I think it's just a nice looking game. It really enriches the enhancement of the, uh, of the experience with the theme in the fact that it's this long boardwalk that you're building buildings on and your people are walking up the city street. I think that's so cool that the scoreboard is in the middle and you're walking down the street to get more points. I love that. 
Presentation, great job. Now, as far as mechanics go, I really, really, really like the system of using characters with multiple actions as opposed to this character gets an action. I think that's cool because each of the characters are unique in the sense that no, they're not, I mean, some of them are better gunfighters than others and some of them are thematically better gunfighters than others, but I like the fact that this one comes with three actions, but its bonuses aren't as great. This one only has two actions, but it's got some great bonuses. Or even when you start hiring the workers, like this, this lady is expensive, but she's got some great actions and bonuses that come with her. So it's nice that all of the characters matter as far as the cards themselves, but it's not overcomplicated. They're just still marked the same way. So I really like the actual worker placement being character driven as opposed to just worker driven. Now I will say that is the place where my major gripe, I shouldn't say major gripe, but really my only gripe comes in in the game is depending on what three actions somebody chooses with a three action character, it can slow down a little bit because it's, well, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, you know, I need to go back and do this before I do that, before I do this. Oh, you know what? Actually, hold up. I can't do either of that. So I got to start this whole thing over because you are doing three full actions sometimes, there is a lot of that, well, I need to, oh, let me back up, and you know what I'm saying? So it kind of slows down a little bit there. So that's my only real gripe with the game. Um, other than that, though, the play is smooth. I, I like the fact that the event phase happens, boom, this is what happens this turn. Now let's play the game. Now, as far as so we've covered the actual worker placement, let's talk about some of the other mechanics in the game. The contract board is nice because you can get these other ways to get points, or you can be a mogul who builds stuff, and it's not hard to get resources in this game, which I like. It's not easy to get money sometimes, which brings me to my other favorite portion of this game. It's got a market. Sure, it's a simple market, basic, basic, basic market, but it's a market. One that the supply and demand actually matter because the more cues you pull out for the production, the less that can be in there for demand. The more they're in there for demand, less for production, etc. I think that's cool. I really like the fact that if you produce a ton this round and they're really not worth anything, if you hold them off, they might be worth way more next round, right? So selling them at market value plus four, it's just really cool the way that the market actually plays in. It's not just a set price. Well, cows are two, silver's three. I like the fact that it fluctuates. That to me, yes, it's randomness, right? Pulling cubes, but it's not that random. And I like the fact that the market would change like that realistically through a town moving through the years, right? You might have a bumper crop season. You might have a building catch on fire. It really does thematically work. I just, this is one of the, 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 the best uses of a theme in a Euro game, in my opinion. It's just absolutely fantastic when it comes to using this Western theme, but also, Okay, a fire broke out. Well, why would that shut off actions? Well, you're putting out the fire. You're having to go help in the town that you're trying to build, right? So you lose an action. That to me is cool. Like that's just smart thinking, right? And then you can uh, marry off your, your, your sons and daughters to get more workers in, and then you could hire potentially more giving you nine actions. And again, that can stretch out the game a little bit, but my goodness, the mechanics are so sound. It's so thought out. But here's what's funny. You're not doing a ton of different types of actions. You're either producing resources, going to buildings to gain resources or building contracts of buildings that's it i mean there's not a ton of stuff you're doing but it manages to balance that to where it doesn't feel mundane or boring like you actually feel like each decision matters but if you don't have enough to do it now you can make up for it later i love that i think that's so smart the advanced game with the gambling and the gunfighting, I wouldn't play without it, but it's not like the most earth shattering thing. The reason I say play with the advanced game is because there are a lot of buildings that need that advanced game to be there. Other than that, it's not like, oh man, you have to play the advanced game because you do gunfights. Well, the gunfights are cool, but it's one kind of thing that slows down between turns. But the buildings that are necessary to me make more sense to play the advanced version just to do that. Now granted, when you're playing and you have four workers out there, you rarely have those gunfights because people are wanting to buy up all those workers that come out. So all summarized to say this, love Nevada City. It's one of my favorite Euros with a theme attached to it that the theme really works so well with it. It's it's It blows Carson City out of the water. I know some people would say that's sacrilege. It just to me does. I know that you shouldn't even compare the two because they're not really the same type of game, but they're both Western Euros that have them to be worker placements. But man, this game looks good. It plays good and it replays really good. I just, I really love this game. So well done, Nevada City. Well, well, well done. Looking forward to more from this game, this line, everything from it. So that's my review. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you.